Let's go. Uh huh. Yeah. I see y'all. I see y'all. Hit that like button. Hit the like button, family. It's that time again. Y'all ready? Happy Saturday. I see you, fam. Y'all ready? Wow. Wow. Episode seven. Y'all ready? Jeez. What's good? Yeah, what's good, family? It's your man, VKJ. And we are back with another live event right here. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Let me know you can hear me. Let me know I'm good. Let me know I'm good. Like I said, y'all the VK fam. Y'all just as much as part of this show as anything. Definitely salute, salute to everybody for coming out. Let me see who's in the building. Let me see who's in the building. What's good? What's good? We back, baby. We back. Who is first in the building? Hola, hola, team. Hola in the building. Queen is in the building. What's good? First in the building, hola. Happy Saturday. Happy Sabado. Courtney's in the building. What's good, Courtney? Welcome back, bro. Welcome back. My man Demarcus Vaughn is in the building. Let me know y'all can hear me. Let me know I'm good. Fire emojis. Definitely. Absolutely. He says, what's good? The sweet Pete. Absolutely. What's going on, Antoine? In the building. What's good? What's good? What's good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We ready? We ready? Todd T. Money Boy is in the building. What's good, dog? What's good, dog? Welcome back. Welcome back. Definitely share this out. You already know how we do. Donice is in the building. Donice, Nicole. Hey, hey, hey. What's good? What's good? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Welcome back. Welcome back. Definitely share this out, family. Hit that like button. You know how we do on the VKJTV and friends show family we, we got a lot to talk about we got a lot to talk about and you know i ain't doing it by myself <laughs> i cannot possibly talk about lucille charles and the doctor without my partner in rhyme and crime seven episodes deep you know what i'm talking about sweet p ashley my sweet perspectives in the building was good <laughs> oh, <sorry. Hey>. well, <laughs> Wrong button. I'm sorry. Wrong button. Wrong button. My bad. Wrong button. All right. All right. Here we go. There we go. Sweet P in the building. What's good? Say what's up to Sweet P, y'all. Hey, how's everybody doing in the chat? Welcome, welcome, welcome. I hope y'all are ready for this recap today. Um, Jay and I have not discussed this episode. No, we have not. This is going to be our real raw and true reactions today. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I think I think they know what they came to see. I think they know what they came to see. I don't see your ladies yet, but I guess they're gonna show up. I guess you know your 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 firm, your law firm is gonna have to show up on this one. You know, Johnny saying? May Cochran and Associates. Yes, yes. Yeah, yes. I don't, I don't, I don't see your squad. I don't see them yet. Maybe they'll pop up. We'll see. It is a Saturday. You know what I'm saying? But you know, everybody's hope. squad though. Everybody's squad, Jay. Oh, everybody's every, oh, whoa, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> everybody squad. Okay. I yeah. see where we going, yeah. all right? Uh uh-huh. What what the market say? Loose lips, lion, loose sit. Oh, 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 oh I am. I am. You sure? You sure? I ain't even shaved. Like, I can't raw dog. So we go in there and raw like we ready. You know what I'm ready? No, no, no. It ain't going to be nothing. You need to give a little disclaimer today, though, Jay. You probably want to give a di- Don't take anything personal. Okay. okay. Yes. Uh, let me give the disclaimer real quick. Hold up. Silence, everybody. <laughs> so, real quick. Again, we're talking about the characters in the show. We are not talking about the Flinnery family. We love the Flinnery family. Meech, T, Miss Lucille. Uncle Charles, everybody in the family. Again, we're just talking about how they wrote the show. I know it's loosely fitted to the truth. So we appreciate you guys giving us BMF. And we're just having our live discussion. And our thoughts and opinions do not represent the thoughts and opinions of this channel. (laughs) All in fun. All in fun. All in fun, family. So please don't take it personal. All right. 
We don't want no hate. DMs hitting up Ashley or me. All right. We don't want nobody trolling either because you already know. Okay. We don't do that. But you ready, Ashley? I'm I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Oh man, this is gonna be fun. What's up? Oh, Monique 69 ways in the building. What's good? What's good? What's good? Good to see you. All right, all right. One one of your people showed up. I don't see Latoya. Uh Candy Love. I don't see her. They're on the way. way. They on the way. All right, all right, all right. I got the Marcus. I got Courtney in the building. I got Tati Money in the building. You know what I'm saying? Waiting for Suburbia Jones to come through. You know what I mean? We will see. We'll see. We'll see. It's gonna be fun. Listen, it's gonna be fun. That's how we're going to keep it. So, again, we are covering episode seven, BMF, season three, live discussion family. And I'm ready. Um, I've, I've been working on this all night, all day. Make sure I got each and every nook, cranny and everything. You know, not like the case, not like the case, but, you know, just, just some stuff that we need to talk about. That's all. That's all. But I'm excited. Let's 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 get into it, fam. If you are ready, I need y'all to type in a seven below, seven, seven, seven. I need some seven, seven, sevens. If you are ready to see and get into this live discussion, give me some sevens. You know, that's my favorite number. You know what I mean? But yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. They have my favorite, my favorite um, rapper of all time at the very end, Rakim. So salute to Rakim. Oh, my bad. Rakim the God. You know what I'm saying? With don't sweat the technique at the end so shout out to the god we are ready we are ready we got some sevens that's right starting the crescent seven you already know that's my favorite number so let's get into it fam so we we started off real quick let's just let's just jump right into it let's jump right into it man. episode seven before we do though shout out to russell orsby hornsby directing this episode russell also plays charles in BMF and shout out to Sweetie. What'd you think about Sweetie's performance? Did she do okay? Did she do all right? I mean, Slugger, what you think? Beautiful gowns. The gowns are beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> no, I <laughs> listen, I'm not really assessing anyone's acting prowess or anything like that. I think she came in, served the purpose, did yeah. what she needed to do. Was it, was it, you know, is she winning any Academy Awards? Absolutely not. But was yeah. it a was it a decent performance? Absolutely. She came and right. did what needed to be done. Yeah, with she the did. I mean, put it down on Meech real quick. I mean, she did decent. Yeah. Sure. I beautiful thought she girl. did all right. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. I love love the abs. Love the abs. I thought she did a pretty good job. You know what I'm saying? As you said, again, we, we're not looking for the Academy Award. And the Academy Award goes to. We're not looking for that. We're just looking to see if you can carry the role and deliver yeah. it properly. And in a convincing way that we actually believe you. So I believe she was like the little sister from next door. You know what I mean? I so that vibe. she definitely delivered. I'm family, not family. I'm a ride kind of tomboy. Yeah. You, yeah, she gave. Yeah. Yeah. She, she was doing that. I don't be saying the giving and all. I don't do it. She was doing it. <laughs> but yes, I got you. All right. Yeah. Let's get into it, fam. All right. Where are we? We are in St. Louis, Missouri. I mean, Missouri. Okay. We finally got here. (laughs) And here we are, family. We got, well, before we get to that, I got to go back. I got to go back one. Did it upload? It didn't even upload. It didn't even upload. But it's okay because what we find out, and we could talk about it, what we find out is early young Meech. And we find out that Bryant was the baseball coach to Meech. Yeah, and, and we remember teaching. that. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's just, you know, every now and then they pop it out. So it's good to kind of see that, spin the block and be like, well, how do they know each other? Why are they so familiar with each other? And yeah, he was his baseball coach. And he I was teaching him. How say it again? I was just going to say, yeah, I loved that flashback. Yeah, 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 yeah. He was teaching Meech how to bunt. And of course, Meech was like, man, if I do that, man, you know what I'm saying? They're going to make him look like a fool. And he was like, yeah, the whole point is to bring him home. Right. The whole point is to bunt the ball so everybody can get home. And Brian's like, yo, it's harder than you think. So we go into this on a level and understanding that, yes, sometimes you're going to have to not just knock it out the park, but you're going to have to do some bunting. You're going to have to do some sacrificing in order to get everybody to come home in order to bring, you know, bring the family together and make it make it happen. Again, we're talking about bringing everybody home. So here we are. We're in St. Louis. We got Jay Push. We got Kia and we got Carter. Okay. Carter's, it, 
Carter's not the last name. Carter is the name of his brother. Okay, just to straighten everybody out. Some people was like, yeah, the last name of both of them is Carter's. No, 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 no. The brother's name is Carter. <laughs> Jay Push, Kia. And yeah, they showing him, you know, he's showing off. Carter is a freaking star baseball player. Like he's getting signed, you know what I'm saying? Draft pick and the whole nine. What do you think about this whole interaction in the beginning? I loved it. We know, but it, it was it was kind of exactly what I thought, right? Like Meech really ingratiating himself to the family, getting to know everyone, getting to see what they're on. And now another opportunity for him to recognize talent, right? When it's there immediately. I loved the brother's relationship. You know what I mean? Talking ish on the baseball field. And I loved Kia's character, right? She's like the little sister who's always tagging along. And I liked that. We really got a feel for kind of what St. Louis might feel like, right? For Meech. And it feels like he was welcomed just like he was family. And to go back really quick though, to what you said about Brian, I didn't get a chance to say this, but yeah. it's really interesting when you think about how he was kind of coaching, almost even parenting Meech and do, didn't do that for his own son. It's, mm. it's really interesting to kind of see that, that shift and that dynamic and how now he could turn so much on Meech. Um, but yeah, I thought that was interesting too. But I'm I'm down for the Lou here for that whole initial moment on the baseball field, but it went left very quickly. Right, right, right. And 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 to go to go along with what you're saying, yeah, it's funny how he did that. And then once they got into the game, he was so hell bent on getting them out of the game. So if he was like a father figure, if you like a father figure when you when you raising these kids, kind of like not to get into the game, I don't think he was trying to take them out. I think he was trying to get them out of the game. You know what I mean? Because he probably had a bond with them as he, as we saw early, teaching them how to play baseball and how to bunt and all this and that. So he's probably trying to get them out. And like we ain't getting out. We we getting money. You know. So maybe that's how it started. And then when they kind of turned their back, and you know, if you saw season one, you saw what happened. You know, Meech was paying off Bryant in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Like, yo, just just look and out for us. That are not. Right. And then it just turned around. And now here we are. Bryant is helping on taking them out. So it's crazy, crazy. OK, but back to St. Louis, you know, Carter, man, he got an arm on him. You know, we finding out that, you know, Kia played by Sweetie also played baseball and she played with the boys. You know what I mean? And that she was really good at doing what she was doing. Turn around, they had their little, little, you know, scuffle, little brother scuffle, and he tells Carter to go to the car, get some water. What happens next? Talk to me. What happens next, Ashley? Lil Bro Bro got snatched up in the Chester van. I said, not the, <laughs> the Chester van. <laughs> Listen, whenever you see those vans, ladies and gentlemen, just go the other way. <laughs> go. It's, there's no good when the windows are black. There's no good when the van don't have no windows. Um, but yeah, he got abducted like we saw in those after school specials. He got snatched up quick fast Damn. in a heartbeat. Damn. They didn't even have a chance. Kia said, oh, it's like she didn't even get it out of her mouth and they were skirting off. I said, man. Oh, yeah. They already the snatched him up, was gone, like out, like they ran over, done, gone. You know what I mean? So now they scooped him up. We don't know who it is. What's going on? All right. Back in the D. We got T. He's talking with the fellas, right? Everybody's kind of solemn. He's like, yo, I'm going to pay for Diz, his funeral costs and all of this and that. Here comes one of the boys like, yeah, man, you know, Uncle Mike, you know, gave us this and all of this and that. You know what I'm saying? When we going to ride on him? And of course, Terry's like, yo, man, we ain't doing it that way. We're not doing it that way. Bodies <laughs> are bad for business. All the episode, the entire episode, bodies are bad for business. What was your reaction to all of this and the way that, you know, Terry's being diplomatic because he did have a meeting with Blaze, right? Yeah. I, you know, take your antique guns and bring them back to your uncle is what he said. Get them antique guns off our blickies off my table. Excuse me. Um, yeah, I feel like Terry was on the right page because we know that bloodshed is just going to elicit more bloodshed at this point. And we think we have an arrangement worked out, right? So at this point, T's like, well, I just got to talk to Blaze and let him know what his child did and we'll be back on track. We don't want any more casualties. Um, and, you know, he kind of like lets the crew 
chill out for a minute, put some on ice. But again, if we don't reach resolution, it's going to be heck to pay the piper. But he did right in this moment, I think. What do you think? Oh, yeah. I mean, again, you know, we, we're we seeing a different side of T. We're seeing, I want to say, um, a more mature side of T because T is learning. He's picking up on how Meech moves, right? More diplomatic. You know, bodies are bad for business. We got to continue to do this. We got to wait. We got to chill. So I think T is definitely growing up and he's maturing in his business savvy as far as being a boss. You know what I mean? So he's learning from his big brother and making moves like that. So, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Good stuff. All right. So now it's time, boy. We riding, yo. We riding, man. Where my brother at? You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Brody, man. The Wire. Shout out, shout out to Brody and the Wire, man. For real. He, I think he did a good job. I think he did a good job. He served his purpose. You know what I mean? Like, yo, yo. So what do you think about this? I mean, if you were Jay Push, and let's just be honest, and everybody, just be honest and let us know. If you were Jay Push and somebody snatched up your little brother, who you love dearly, and he's supposed to go to the league and all of this and that, and you know, your mama, you know, he, your job as a big brother is to protect your little brother. But you didn't. So now you're looking at, would you react the same way, Ashley? No, 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 no. And I hope this isn't foreshadowing to who Jay Push is and who Meech will have to contend with down the road because he's too volatile and too hot-headed. In a situation like this, a hostage situation, you want to let cooler heads prevail because you don't know what they're capable of. You didn't even know who really had your brother initially, right? And you're just immediately, no. Like you're the reason he got his finger chopped off because you didn't know how to act. So no, I'm going to err on the side of caution. I mean, you're in your feelings, but it's not about you. What did the first thing he said in the car was, if I let this go, if I give in to this request, everybody's going to try me in the loo, right? It's not about that. It was about getting your brother back. But his pride, pride has been the theme this season, right? Uh, I think that pride got in the way. Yeah, I think initially, if that was my big brother, I probably would react on an emotional level, right? I probably would be like, what the hell? Who could it be? Da, 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 da. I probably would like just keeping it 1000. I would react initially that way. Now, the, the problem is, is that, of course, Meech is trying to talk sense to him, but he's not listening. It is an ego thing with him because he's like, I've run these streets. It's my plan. My brother. Da, 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 da. You know what I'm saying? So it's like when you are hot headed like that, when your emotions and your adrenaline is flowing, you're not really trying to listen to reason at that point. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, let me get my brother back. I'll take out everybody. And again, we already find out that he's really not doing good business anyway, because the reason why they took him and scooped him up is because they he sold them some bad goods. Right. So he's not even doing business right. So, yeah, you're right. It is his fault why he's getting scooped up and we move on and we find out exactly what happened. OK, yeah. I I just feel like I, and you know, I hate to say it. I just feel like he's a liability. He kept that, he kept that energy throughout the entire episode. It wasn't mm -hmm. just like an initial reaction. And honestly, if someone else didn't step in, they probably would have took his brother out. Honestly, oh, yeah. based on oh, him. Yeah. alone. So yeah, I don't know how I feel about him going forward, but we gonna see. <laughs> yeah. Like I said, it was adrenaline. It was, that's my brother. And it wasn't, it wasn't he wasn't thinking logically, you know what I mean? And Meech was trying to just calm him down, like, yo, chill. If they was going to take him out, they would have did that at the park. They wouldn't have snatched him up. You know what I'm saying? So let's just be reasonable about the whole thing. You know what I'm saying? But when he said, yo, I ain't paying nothing, <laughs> that guy was looked real confused. Like, huh? Like, what? Let me see. Hold on. Let me see. <laughs> do that again. Do that again. He was like, what? <laughs> He's like, what? what? He ain't know what to say. He was like, what happened? Yo, they ain't gonna pay nothing. What? <laughs> Listen, after talking big cash money, he was like, you're going to be burying them in like little boxes or whatever he said. And then, yeah, this might not right. go. <laughs> <laughs> that guy yeah. right there that was on the phone, he plays somebody. I, somebody showed it before. He was in another uh, show, but he looked real young. I forgot who it is. And, and if y'all remember, definitely drop that in the comments below. But yeah, it was it was pretty funny. He was like, uh, I don't know what to do now. Like. <laughs> I thought he was just going to say, okay, I'll pay. Give me my brother back. Nope, it ain't going down. Jay Push wants want your head for this. He wants your head for this. Let me see what the people are talking about, because I see y'all. Uh, Oz, Jay. Huh? Odd said Oz. Oh, I, right. Okay. Oh, from Oz. Okay, he was in Oz. Okay, okay, okay. Got you, got you, got you. Yeah, yeah. He was in a lot there. Man, I remember Oz, man. That was dope. That was a dope show. But, but here's the awful thing in this yeah. scene, Jay. 
who is the guy he said that Jay Push is cold blooded, but the other one is ice cold. So who who so is my, this other guy? Mook, Mook, Murder Mook, <laughs> but that's yeah. a rapper's name. Murder Mook is actually a, a rapper, a battle rapper's name. That's funny that they threw that in there like that. But yeah, 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 yeah. So that's that's really what's going on. They are scared out of their mind because listen, man, like. If they don't get this money, they done. They done, yo. You know what I'm saying? Okay, let me see. Tati Money says uh, he's from Zoe 101. Okay. Yeah, money move. There we go. Money move. I said murder move. <laughs> yeah, money move. Money move. He's like, yo, he ice cold, son. So they scared, man. They they real scared. I mean, and obviously, Jay got money. Jay does have some money. You know what I mean? I mean, if you putting a price on their head for 100000 and 200 to, to bring them back, then yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you, you got some bread. So he does run the loo, but he ain't running it properly. And thank God Meech was there, right? Thank God Meech was there. Yeah. All right. Let's get to it. Go ahead. Let's talk about it, family. All right. As I titled it, The Loo and Flowers of Denial. That's what I titled it. Flowers of Whoa. Denial. Okay. So let's get into it, fam. Let's talk about it, okay? Be fair, be reasonable, everyone. But we're going to give our opinions, okay? All right, let's talk about it. Ashley, some flowers hit the door. You know, mm -hmm. the door of a house that Charles built with his bare hands, okay? And, you it know, he brings it in. He brings it in. And, uh, you know, it's not from him. So he looks at the card. And what does it say there? It says the filet mignon at whatever will change what your life your life can't wait to see you tomorrow night reese okay mm -hmm. now you know she comes downstairs and at first she thinks that it's from charles she's like oh charles right yeah charles will never like, again we'll get to your opinion in a minute but i'm just <laughs> laying it out let me lay out the, let me lay it out first and then we'll get to that right so he says, well, uh, you know, enjoy the filet mignon because I believe that it's small. You read my card? Well, when a man sends flowers to my door of a house that I built with my bare hands, I'm going to look at the card. Okay, so let's first deal with that. And then we'll deal with the actual, you know, in-depth conversation. So what was your reaction when you first saw the flowers and the card and, and the, you know, this whole beginning of the discussion? What was your first reaction? Uh, you know, Jay, we talked about this. We talked about this in the final predictions. If you guys didn't watch it, that was a fun video. You should go back it was. and watch that live. But, uh, you know... Lucille and her boundaries, she doesn't have them. So, I mean, Dr. Feelgood was doing what a man going to do. You know what I'm saying? Who's trying mm. to vie or win a woman's attentions and affections. He only did what she allowed and made permissible. Mm. Now, I was hoping in my heart of hearts that maybe we were wrong. You know, maybe Charles did scrounge up a few coins uh, and get his wife some flowers. But alas, it wasn't him. It did come to his house. He's allowed to read whatever comes to his house. He is. I mean, I, you oh. know, I don't, see, I don't see the issue at this point. Uh, you gave her permission to go out. You didn't set any boundaries, Mr. Charles. She clearly hasn't set any boundaries with the good doctor, and she's about to go out with him again. And you know, it's all on the table. I mean, what 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 okay. else? What else is there to okay to um, say? Lucille set right. better boundaries. It was disrespectful to send it to another man's home. However, Dr. Feelgood ain't married to, to Charles. Lucille is. Okay. Okay. Uh, Sean Prince says she looked cute. Okay. Yes, she looked cute in that Wendy's outfit. She always does. You know what I'm saying? Definitely accents the upper level of her body. Love it. So um, uh, DeMarcus says Dr. Shay Shay was dead wrong. Mm. Um, let's see. Uh, Tati Money Boy, what's good? What's good? Says I got a feeling about the doctor. There's something not right about him. Yeah. Um, and uh, 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 I don't know what that is about. Okay, Antoine. All right, Antoine Herring. What's good? What's good? Says uh, funny how when Lucille thought Charles was out, she was ready to baseball bat him up, but when the shoe was on the other foot. She had every good reason to go out with the doctor. Hmm, interesting. Mm -hmm. I'm just letting the people speak. 
Uh, DeMarcus says, it would be hilarious if Dr. Shay Shay is not in doubt <laughs> and Lucille made a huge mistake. <laughs> <I tried to. laughs> uh, uh, okay, you're talking about the lady on the show, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're talking about Mecole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, is that you or Mecole? You're talking about the lady oh, on the show? Wendy's, yeah. That was her Wendy's outfit. No, I, I mean, he might be talking about you too. So, you know, it's all good. Okay, either one, either one. Okay, cool. Either one is good. All right, she she'll take the compliment. <laughs> so, I will express my thoughts at this time and moment. First and foremost, violation, bro. You already know. You already know the deal. Boundaries or not, she already told you she's still married. He's still living at the house, and she is processing all of this. So, for you to send this to the house, very nice. But bad timing, bro. Bad timing. Again, like I said in the predictions, why don't you fall back? Let her do what she has to do. Figure it out, right? But you're violating. You're calling the house. You're sending flowers. You're doing crazy stuff. Now, again, when he said, listen, I'm going to give you all the space that you, when Charles said, I'm going to give you all the space that you need to figure this out. That part ain't it. That's a violation. That's disrespectful. And the doctor doesn't give a F. As you said, he said F Charles. You said that yeah. in the predictions. So this was definitely disrespectful. Um, I didn't like it. Uh, it was nice flowers, but still, it was disrespectful. And yeah, he, let's go into the conversation now. He said that as I'm trying to put this back together, here he goes and he shows up, right? And then, okay, I mean, if you want to. I mean, out. here's the thing, right? With with the yeah. whole thing. And like she said, and it, it goes back into what we've been talking about and what um, Lucille has been revealing about herself, right? In the past couple episodes, which is that one, mm -hmm. I felt trapped, right? When she has the discussion with Nicole, I don't mm -hmm. want you to be who I am today or where I was feeling trapped, right? And we also find out, and you, I'm sure we'll get to it later in the episode, I've only been with this one man, in my whole life, right? Um, and then we have the conversation that they're having in the kitchen right there, which is like, you, it's all been about you, Charles. It's been about you, this whole marriage, right? You, you ain't paid them bills. You get a little bit of money. You buy you a musical instrument, okay? You ain't, you ain't paying these bills and you are not finishing these walls, okay? Lucille said, for once, I'm going to make a choice for me about what I do with the rest of my life. I feel like, Charles, you trying to put it together, bro, but it's maybe a little too late. I mean, it seems like she's divesting herself. Okay. Thank you, you for that. Don't want it no more. You, can't, you, can't, you can't make it by yourself. Okay. You thank you for it. sharing your thoughts. Now I will speak. First and foremost, fam, all right, we're talking about a married couple, Lucille and Charles, okay? They're married, okay? Are, are they not? They are married, okay? All married people go through some problems and issues, okay? Now, again, she was, he was the first person she's been with, we find out, right? And she didn't, I could see if she just had one child, right? If she had one child, you know, things are just not working out. It is what it is, right? If things are just not working out, hey, we need to not be married, da, da, da. But you had three children with Charles at this point. You couldn't have felt that trapped if you're having three children with this man. Because honestly, if you're going with the flow, I get it. If you're going with the flow, then that tells me that you're just going with the flow and you didn't really love Charles. You just got pregnant as a teenage teenager. Y'all both, it's your fault. It's both your fault for having children, having Meech at a very young age, and you want to do right, and he wanted to do right, so y'all got married, okay? Now, here we go. Yes, they weren't rich. Yes, he's a musician. You knew that. He was pursuing everything which had to do with him being a musician, okay? She knew that. Now, yes, did he not handle the money properly and not pay bills? Yes, we already know that, okay? We already know he didn't handle it properly, but you still have a home, you still have a place to sleep. You still have food. Here's so let's be honest. Hold on. Hold on. Let me finish. I'll let you finish. I'll let you speak. Here's the thing. If it was that bad, why you ain't leave after the second child? You had three children. Three children with this man. So now, because he ain't paying the bills and now it's getting a little tough, now it's like I'm trapped. 
Now it's like, oh my God, you know, I, I need to live a life for myself. But you chose this life. You ain't had to say yes to the marriage. You ain't even had to have this child. You ain't even had to have Meech. And again, we're just saying our opinions and our thoughts. I'm just saying this. She chose the life. And when it got rough, right? When it got rough, she's now falling apart and making it hard for Charles because Charles is trying to. And then when Charles was trying to get some, as she said, well, you wanted some and they've been waiting for three weeks. And she's just talking about bills, but she ain't talking about the love that's supposed to be in the marriage. She don't love Charles. Let's be honest. She got pregnant, fell into this thing, went along with it. OK, and now here comes the doctor. Oh, this could have been us. To me, that ain't, you know, I'm saying again, we're just sharing our opinion. I don't see that as a really loving wife. I see that as I just got pregnant. I'm going along. I'm trying to be church. I'm trying to keep the kids in the church and the whole nine. We know what Charles did. He messed up. He's trying to make up for it now. But here you go, not making it easy for us to come back together as a family. You want to live a life that you never had, but you chose this life. You chose it. You did. And if you feel trapped now, I get it. But you chose this life. Take responsibility. Stop being like a little schoolgirl. Come on. The grass ain't greener, but I get it. If you water the grass, then yeah, it's going to be greener. I get that, but Charles is trying. And you're complaining about a rough marriage when you should be getting counseling and going along. You got to go to Wendy's, go to Wendy's. I got to go to GM, you go to GM. We got to hold this family down one way or another. But when it gets rough, you're supposed to hold it down as a wife. Now, if I messed up, I messed up. Please forgive me. I messed up. I slept with Mabel. I get it. But now you're really going in on some like, I just want to be in a moment with you and the doctor. I wish it could have been us. And it's like, dog, I get that people change. But look, when it gets rough, as a married person, you ain't supposed to be like, well, you know what? It's all your fault and blah, 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 blah. Why don't you take responsibility on your part? That's all I'm saying. Take responsibility. And again, we're just sharing our opinions. There you go, fam. I see in the chat. I see I see what you're saying. Let me, let me get to the chat. Is it yeah, okay? no, yeah, yeah. Go ahead and speak. Go ahead and speak. I'm going to bring up some stuff. I think it's not as straightforward as that. I think okay. it's very nuanced. And I think, I think it's a reach to say Lucille didn't love her husband when they've been together 20 years. What I'm saying is... Once he broke the vows and once that kind of element was introduced, I think it opened Lucille's mind to where she was, what she went through. I don't think it took away from the love that she had for him, but it's also her prerogative not to want to make it work at this point. If she don't, just because he chose today okay. that he wants to make an effort to make things better doesn't mean that she has to comply. And she's okay. telling him that up front. It's not like she's acting like, okay, we're going to make this work. She's saying, no, Charles, I'm going to choose for myself okay. what it is that I want. And I think she's got permission to do that. And I wouldn't take away from the wife or the mother that she had been for those 20 years, just okay. like you wouldn't want anyone taking from Charles, the husband, I guess, Whatever husband he I'm was. not taking away from it, but when times get rough in a marriage, like you ain't supposed to just boom, you ain't supposed to just totally throw in the towel. But if but I hear what you're saying, if she wants to just stop, then granted, divorce him already. Don't go playing around. Divorce the man. Too, she, he divorce. Don't hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. You said right is right and wrong is wrong, right? Yeah. If right and she, right is wrong is wrong. Isn't it the right thing to do to not play around while you're still married to get a divorce and then go and be what you want to be with whoever you want to be with? Isn't that Absolutely. the right thing to do? For it, but he instead doesn't of keep hurting your husband, instead of keep hurting your husband, keep hurting right? him with with him. allow with not setting boundaries, allowing the, the doctor to, to freaking call a house and violating the home, creating more yeah. chaos in the home by sending flowers now. Come on, man. Yeah, you can go out to dinner with him. You do what you got to do to figure it out. But still, come bring it to my home now. OK, yeah, he came through, delivered the baby. Thank you for that. We appreciate it. But now you send this stuff to the crib. Now you calling all the time. Come on, man. Lucille does need to set boundaries and just say, yo, for real, let me figure this part. out. Huh? I said, and I agree with that part. She has to set boundaries, but let's not try to force something that's not going to work. You know what I'm saying? If she's saying I'm done, she it. asked for a divorce. Charles said he wasn't going for a divorce. So I don't know what, at this okay. point, other than They're her in the being middle. honest, I don't know what else she could do. Okay, her being honest is what? I'm going to decide for now. Before is I'm going to figure it out. 
Now it's I'm going to decide for myself. Fine. You decide for yourself, but don't hurt your husband now in the process. That's all I'm saying. Cut I it mean, off. I'm about Charles feelings at this Cut point. it she off. Honest, which is more than he gave her. What? Say it again. I, I didn't hear. Her honesty is more than he's given her. So if he chooses to be hurt behind it, he's hurt. And, you know, that sucks. But she was hurt as well by his dishonesty. They're only being honest oh, because they're only being honest. They only being honest because they agree. They both agreed on being honest. They both agreed on that. Yeah. And he said, go he did what he did. It out. So right. what does fig unless he put boundaries on what figuring it out looks like? Boundaries she is not bringing your relationship to my house when we're still married. That's a boundary. Don't bring it here. You do what you do well, out there with the filet mignon. You do what you do with the filet mignon and don't disrespect me as I'm trying to do something to bring us together. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I hear you, Monique. I hear you. Everybody's going to be hurt, but everybody's hurting. Not just Charles. Also Terry. Also Nicole. Everybody's being hurt in this process. So <laughs> how are you helping the situation by not sending, setting boundaries with that? You know what I mean? So... I'm just I mean, saying. but that's his house. And I think if he needs to have a, I don't know what the male version of a Barbara Shirley moment, go and talk to the good doctor, Charles. If that's how you feel about it. If she's not going to do it and you feel slighted or disrespected. So now, you mean, want, now you want to fight. But now Let's you want to fight because you know these are men. You want, and you know what? You know what? As we're talking about this thing, as we're talking about this thing, let's just get, let's just get to that, right? Because this is like the craziest part of it all. Let's just get to that. Let's just talk about that. When they were in the car smooching and doing all this and that, right? When they was in the car smooching, okay? We on the same page? Mm hmm Okay. When they was in the car smooching, because I'm talking directly to you right now. When they was in the car smooching, and she was like, ah, oh, I love it. I'm feeling it. I want more of it. You smell good. You look good. And all of this and that. It. And, and, and the whole too. nine, right? And he's like, well, what you going to do? And he, she's like, and I quote, uh, put your hand back there and I'll show you what I'm going to do, right? Okay. <laughs> They're getting their little smooch on. they doing what they do, right? Why? Is this, really fi is this really figuring it out? Being in a moment when you still married to the man? I think that's this trifling is, to me. They agree that's, to. that's trifling. They, they ain't agree to that. Listen, it ain't Charles no fun. did not agree to her doing all of this and that. Come on, man. It ain't it ain't no fun when the rabbit got it. I'm saying she's doing, she told the doctor, she said, I'm not making no choices tonight. I'm just trying to have fun. Trying which to is live in the I moment and you a married woman. Was going to be. A, I'm not a married woman at all. We talking married about woman. Deal. You a He's married, a you know who I'm talking about. No you know who I'm talking about. You a married woman and you playing around. Can just divorce Charles already. She asked for a divorce, Jay. Talk to Uncle he don't want to give it to her. So guess what? You got to do. You got to wait and do it the right way. You I out there getting smooched Charles, on, getting Charles, getting felt Charles, on. Like. Listen, Charles know yeah. that they are potentially about to get Bucky naked, right? Because he talked about the little filet mignon. So if he ain't say, Lucille, don't you get busy with that man. He said, figure it out. Maybe this is what figuring it out looks like to her. This is their arrangement. This is their separation. Nah, you know what it is? I'm going to tell you what it is. Dating this other man. I'm going to tell you what it is. Because she was a teenager, because she was with Charles, they had, she said, oh, you know, I'm not a trophy and all of this and that. They had a, they had a grudge match. And they obviously, it sounds like they fought over her and Charles won. And she went with Charles. She didn't have to go with Charles, right? Mm -hmm. She didn't, okay? But now she's with the doctor, and it's like, oh, I just want to live in the moment. No, just just divorce him, yo. Just just get out of it yeah, so then the you don't have says. to figure it out. I get it. He don't want to sign a paper because he still believed that he can bring it together. That's all I'm saying. But you well, out here, and you ain't, you ain't telling the doctor to chill. Maybe she'll get a piece like Charles got a piece and she'll figure out it's not greener and maybe they'll work it out at that point. I don't know. This is Auntie Lucille business. And all I'm saying is if they're going to do <laughs> the separation, have some boundaries in place. Don't tell her to go out and figure it out and then try to police how she's figuring it out. Well, don't bring it to my doorstep. That if you want to go out and figure it out, what do you say? I said, I told you I agree with that part. She should okay. have set better boundaries. But right. the doctor do what a man gonna do and i mean what can we do you. about it and i'm telling you the same way the same way t told mama lucille 
right? Mama Lucille got the nerve to tell T, you just like your daddy, okay? And you cut from the same cloth, right? Because you messing around with Marquisha and you messing around with Lawanda and all this and that, da, da, da. And what did T say? Well, I know about you and the doctor. How you going to be the popcorn the kettle black? See, that's what I'm saying. Lucille be, you know what I'm saying? She be contradicting herself on a lot of different levels, B. You know what I'm saying? One side, she want to be like, oh, you're going to lose Lawanda the same way and your father's the same way. But then she running around with the doctor and she's still married. And the, like I said, everybody hurting it. T hurting, Nicole hurting, everybody hurting. OK, everybody hurting. I, I know see. Charles initiated it with the with the thing that he did with Mabel. I get it. But she's not helping it. She's not I'm trying to figure this out. Dude. I'm sure T is like help it, Jay. I don't I don't think she wants to help it. And as yeah. far as I think it's kind of false equivalency though, I will say that because T has and T pissed me off this episode, if I can be honest with you. But yeah. the fact that um T has had done been doing this for years. We're talking about Lucille in her isolated situation compared to a history of behavior. I don't I don't know if that's fair. We don't, don't know, know if that's fair. We don't know if it's for years now. Come on, you you really exaggerating. We don't know if it's years that Charles that T has been with Marquisha at this point. I'm talking about at this point. She just had a baby. Lawanda and they just got together. In the past, season 2, they just got together and now we in season 3. I'm talking about years. It hasn't been years. It's been at least a year. Be serious. Okay, but you, again, you're exaggerating with the years. It's not years, okay? That's all I'm saying. I'm saying it's been an ongoing in and out situation. Got for you. But when you, when, when your mama come at you and saying, yo, um, you shouldn't be doing this because you're going to lose her. Thank you, mama. What you doing? You about to lose your husband. And you don't, whether you care or not. Oh, you need to stay out of my business. Come on, man. Well, you hurt the your family. Mama, you allowed you to talk the family. to family. Mama hurting yeah. the family, yo. Mama they hurting the family. the family. They all hurt the family first. Yeah, Mama's just now you. hurt the family. Mama, Mama's on some like y'all. I'ma do me, and it's like yo, dog. Like, pff, do you? Hey, girl. Terry, girl. separate. And we'll see what happens. All right, that's it. I'm good. You good? <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. Terry, grown them kids grown. Mama said, Mama Lucille said, "F them kids." Listen. She it, did she? Up. Because now she all up in Terry business, though. She said, F them kids. Why are you trying to tell Terry what to do when you freaking mess around with the doctor? Like, cut I it out. Only, I think she's only doing that because uh, she knows kind of the nature of Lawanda. I don't think it's so much about Lawanda as it is maybe about Terry having a relationship Yo. with her kids. But we'll see. Yo, I was mad, though. I was because it's like it's like Lucille teaming up with Lawanda and it's like they going against Charles and T. And it's like, <laughs> dog. Yeah, we know they doing wrong, but y'all teaming up now. And you talking about, oh, yeah, the doctor, you know, he really delivered the baby. And, you know, he he made sure she stayed alive. And she bigging up the doctor in front of Lawanda and freaking her mother. Like, yo, dog. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Anyway, anyway, anyway. <laughs> this is good. This is good. This is good. This is good. But, yes, she said what she said. I heard what she said. I kind of felt what she said. I'm doing me. I'll figure it out and I'll decide for myself what I'm going to do. OK, granted, do that, but don't bring it to the house show. Just don't because you're going to cause more problems. All right. Jay, real quick, though. Think- in the, in the, yeah, Jay, real quick, real quick, real quick. In the comment, yeah. do you see the comment from Monica M? Hold on, hold on. Let me, let me bring this down. Let me bring this down. I'll, I'd love to know your thoughts on that. <laughs> you love to know my thoughts on that. Monica <laughs> M, where you at? Where you at? Uh, T didn't have the same energy with his dad. He didn't have nothing to say. T knows they are getting a divorce. It's not the same. What do you mean? You know what she means. Terry didn't I don't come know what to you mean. Charles like, Dad, why you doing why you doing mom like that? Well, again, Charles didn't come like Charles that? didn't come at Terry though. In fact, came. in fact, when he brought Marquisha to the house, you know who was talking the most? Lucille. Terry, you know you shouldn't be doing this, da 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 But you with the doctor. You totally contradicting. What are you talking about? T- Charles couldn't come to, couldn't come to Terry on that level. You know, Monica, Monica, that's your name? Charles couldn't come because he knew that he was guilty of what he did with Mabel. But here comes Lucille. You shouldn't do that because you're going to lose the one. Uh, uh, uh. How are you going to talk to me like that? Pot call the Keller back. Exactly, DeMarcus. Lucille is a hypocrite. Okay. Hmm. She is. She is. You know what I'm saying? You can't have it both ways. You're like you 
And, and your and your family knows what you're doing. So anyway, all right, family, this this is good stuff. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me see. Hold on, hold on. It was something I saw real right, quick. No this edit, is, said it. Huh? I said right, but, no edit, said it. Down all right, look. What do he say? I'm gonna read everybody. Jay is right. Get a divorce first. At this point, she's a married woman that's choosing, which makes her a hypocrite. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate I appreciate that. I appreciate that. All right. All right. This is this is great stuff. I love how we they don't want her to say nothing. Who? And at the end of the day, she's still his mom and still has his best but interest. You can in you can do that, but you're talking to now a grown son. You're not talking to a little kid who's playing two sides and playing with one girl and another. You're dealing with a grown man who is doing wrong. We know that. I'm not gonna say he's not doing right. He's doing wrong. He's messing with his baby mama but and messing with one child. Right. Okay, we got the bloodline thing. We got the bloodline thing down, but he's still trying to be the best father he can, even though he he just don't feel the same way. Yeah, because he's being honest. He don't want to be with LaWanda, and he told her that. Like she said, you come to see this little girl, but you got a whole other child you ain't even asked about, Terry. Terry, He forgot. He forgot about it. Fine. He came to see the baby. But but here's the thing. Here's the thing. He came with gifts. He came with gifts and bought her a freaking van for the kids. The dude is trying to be, again, a whole freaking... Hello, 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 hello. We we're gonna get to all that, but I'm just saying the man is trying, and y'all don't give credit to men that's trying, even though they did wrong. They did wrong, but now they're trying to do what they can. He don't want Lawanda. It's obvious. He wants Marquisha. Why can't she see that? She's like, oh, you came to see my man? That ain't your man, Lawanda. You just had a baby by him. Jay, she's not concocting this in her mind. He is still piping LaWanda down, guaranteed. He's still getting it in where it fit in. He is. There's no way LaWanda in her mind thinks that that's her man and he's not still giving her the D. That that remains to be seen. We don't know that. They just had a baby. I mean, I I mean, I wouldn't have threw my fur out, but I'd have been mad too. Like you'd have <laughs> a whole house, and I'm living. You know my favorite word, but in day what, squalor. <laughs> look, 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 look. Hey, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. If I don't get along with you, and you making my life difficult, and yeah, you know, I'm not feeling you anymore. But we had a child already, and we got busy again, and now you having a second child. I'm going to do what I can to be the best father I can. But if we don't get along, we just don't get along. I just can't rock with you. We're not married. The only thing Absolutely. that's tying us together, but the only thing that's tying us together is a child. So I'm going to do the best that I can to give you some things and give you a van and give you, bring some gifts and take care of my daughter and my other child the best way I can. Because we don't get along. What's wrong with that? A man you trying to... Family two episodes ago, Jay. I want my family back. I want my family he back. He did. He oh, did because, God. again, he was going back and forth, too. He Remember, he's still young, too. He's still trying to figure it out, too. But obviously, right now, in this season, he's not feeling her at all. He's not feeling the Wanda. He's trying to just be a good father. That's it. Bought the whole car thing, man. We all over the place. I love this, though. I love but it. But buy a house. Really- Give me a house. Give me a house. Give me a house, Terry. He bought a house to make sure that Terry Jr. was straight so they didn't go to CPS. He got his little spot, right? And now that's gone. Marquisha took care of that. Hello? Hello? Marquisha took care of that, remember? Marquisha. Marquisha. Didn't she take care of the CPS? Isn't it gone now? I don't know. Go, well, let's 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 let's, let's go. We got- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in a Hold on. But Marquisha took care of that. Why would I not take care of Marquisha for making sure my son doesn't go to CPS? I'm just saying. If he can't see through Big Quiche, Fat Cat, whatever we okay, want to call her. We talk about her trifling ass too. She is trifling. I'm not saying that she's not. I'm just saying that she did help him with the CPS. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we all over the place. I love it though. If y'all love it, family, if you just join it okay. myself and Ashley... Hit that like button, fam. This is good stuff. I know y'all here to see us rumble and tumble over all of this. This is great stuff. But hit that like button. Definitely subscribe if this is your first time. Uh, Let's see. I'm going to read it. What you say, Monica? Don't act like he wasn't just playing house with LaWanda. He was. She was only found out. um, She only found out he was sleeping with Marquisha at the same time Marquisha called CPS, then pretended to solve the problem. Did she? Where's your where's your evidence, ma'am? Where's your evidence that Marquisha called CPS? If Marquisha called CPS, then the person that she called could have, she could have easily called and said, yo, 
shut that shit down. But she didn't. She had to go through hoops and bring up stuff on this senator or whoever it was. It's performative, Jay. Listen, everything. Again, we don't Keisha know. Yeah, some, that's a something. We're going to see. A Big Keish. Big Keish, okay, does everything to be performative and to look like something she's not. We, we know she's a, a, man, a master manipulator. She's a criminal mastermind. It's going to come out. But we'll, we'll, we'll get to it because Keish is playing uh, chess and they're playing checkers. Okay. Right, she's got a right. whole game plan. We, we know she's not. Manipulator. Yeah. We know she's trifling. We know that. Okay. And that's okay. It's okay. Breeze did not agree with me. That's okay. That's why we're here. We're not always going to agree on everything and that's okay. But here's the thing. There's no evidence. Buck's thoughts. My guy. That's right. There's no evidence of that. So please stop with the speculation. All right. She knew, okay, all you say, she knew the judge, Markeisha, did the same thing with the policeman and T. What? What are you talking about? We didn't even get to that yet, but I know what you're saying. She's trifling, but there's no evidence. Let's stick to what you said. There's no evidence that she called CPS. None. None. So let's but not we're even... learning her character, and it's not above her at this point. To but do. again, it's not if we're talking about facts, not speculation, there's no evidence given. <sighs> okay. So let's get to it. Man, we all over the place. This is heated today. I love it. I love it. I love it. Hit that like button, fam. Whether you agree with me or not, I love it. Either way, if you agree with Ashley or not, we love it. We love the conversation. This is a live discussion. That's cool. That's cool. Okay, where was I at? Jesus. Okay, here. Okay, we did that. Okay, uh, let's talk about T in this conversation with Blaze, right? Yo, here's a gift. What do you think about this whole scene right here? I mean, pfft. Come, Come on, on, Mr. Blaze, man. Come on, Hardner Brig. You can do better <laughs> than that. Um, I, at this point, I honestly didn't like this for his character, right? Because uh -huh. when we meet him, we think of him as this man of refinement, a boss uh -huh. or whatever. And in this moment, it appears that he's been uh, sunned by Mr. Steal Your Girl. Mrs. Steal Your Girl. Like, your uh -huh. daughter is running you, sir? Like, she, oh, she run it. She the one I yeah. need to talk about. And I really appreciate Terry's response because he basically said as much, okay, you're impotent <laughs> in this situation. So clearly I need to do something else and here, take back your gift. I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't need it. Um, you're the enemy now. And I was like, well, got to do what he got to do. And I hope this encourages Blaze because I do think that he and Terry have a lot of similarities. And if we can get Henry out of the way, this could be a beautiful partnership. It could. I be. just want to know what Henry, I, I know that Henry is his <laughs> daughter, right? Mm -hmm. But if I move her out of the way, that would, what what did he say? He said that would mess me up as far as being a boss. What are you talking about, bro? Why would that mess you up to get your freaking Achilles heel, the pain in your ass out of the way? Sideline her. Why would that mess you up? Family, drop your comments below. Why would that mess up Blaze if he was to say, you know what? Nah, you know what? Stop doing that. Stop freaking blazing and, and putting BMF on fire. How would that mess him up? Because I think... I think what he's thinking is in order, and we've seen the character that they've created in Henry, the only mm. way she'll be stopped is to be put down completely. And I think he's thinking about what his reputation would be if he's known as a man who took out his own child. You know what I'm saying? Mm. I think, I think that's the look talking about um, I, how I'd be looked at as a husband, as a father in the community, as a whatever. I think that is all around him doing what he knows he'll have to do in order to be successful or keep his status. Because at this point, the police don't want to mess with Blaze anymore. Terry's, you know, planning his next move, which we see later on in the episode. I mean, yeah. Blaze going to have to make a tough decision or make it easy for somebody to get at Henry. Plausible you know what I think it is? What? You know what I think it is? I think it's BS. <laughs> I think what he's telling Terry B is BS. You know what I'm saying? Like... Again, he's not Terry's boss, right? But he's the boss over Henry, so he can get Henry to do whatever he wants her to do. Okay? For the most part. So. Okay? Well, not hear me out. Mm -hmm. Hear me out. A lot of these moves that she's making, he don't even know about until after the fact. But when he did say, take Bryant, 
I'm gonna put him on your team. Do what you gotta do. She ain't, she even if she said no, she still took him in. So he's still a boss. It's just he has to move strategically, as you said. But I think it's BS what he's saying. I think he can sign Lana, and it's not going to affect his business at all. Because if we remember from the last episode, her shooting up and killing or unaliving Amberson messed up their other side businesses that they had. Okay? Now, when we see it in this episode, she looks very calm. Do you think that Blaze had a conversation with her? Like, yo, dude, you, you just... You just got it. You think that happened? No, because I don't think he has any power over Henry. I think that she's a live wire and a loose end that he'll have to clean up. And I think he just as a man is going to have to reconcile taking her out or letting somebody do it. Because mm-hmm. she's not going to act right. She she b- took out the blowtorch or flamethrower, whatever it was, at, right after their conversation where he said, I need you to, I need a, I need a peace. I need a truce. Like, mm-hmm. Henry, Henry, <laughs> Henry's her own person. I don't think Blaze has any control over her at this point, but okay. I could be wrong. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. You know, I think I think if it is of his advantage, I think that he will do what he needs to do. If it if all the cards are down on the table and there's no other way to get around this but to get rid of his daughter or put her on the side, then I think he would do it. And I see I see what you're saying, Monica. Uh, Marquise says no one, uh, no one, anyone should be defending. <laughs> When someone shows you who they are, believe them. Listen, I'm not defending her at all. I'm, I'm really not defending her. I know she's trifling as hell. It's just that the CPS thing, there's no evidence of that. That's all. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Uh, let me see. DeMarcus says, Henry is flashy, just like Meech, and Blaze is a lot of like Big L. Okay. 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 Yeah, she is. I mean, yeah, she is kind of. Just, she, she just go overboard. Okay. Let's keep it moving. Let's keep it moving. <laughs> Let's keep it moving. Man, oh man, oh man, oh man. We don't find card at all, but we do get a box with this. Don't live with us. You see, I put the live in there. <laughs> don't live with us. Last chance. <laughs> what was your reaction? <laughs> I try to be. <laughs> what was your reaction when when this like we get this finger in the box? What, what was your thoughts? If I can be honest with you, I thought I was having a flashback to Game of Thrones. Mm-hmm. If y'all mm-hmm. know, y'all know when they took Theon Greyjoy's member and sent it okay. to his family, I was just praying it wasn't that crucial. I was glad to see it was a finger, to be quite honest with you, and not oh, some wow. other appendage. Um, but yeah, in this moment, I felt mama. She was like, you didn't, you, my, my baby didn't come to evil behind you if you don't get your mm-hmm. brother back. And, and <laughs> what I also saw in this moment was yeah. clearly mama's got a favorite. Okay, it seems mm. as though the older brother, Pusha, Jay Pusha, um, mm. be messing up stuff a lot because she was like, again, you, you right. mucked it up, right? Um, and so I loved Kia trying to console her, but she was also, mama was like, Kia, get out of here. I want my baby back. Whatever you talking about, bump them right. prayer. I need you to do whatever to mm. get my child um, back. It, it was kind of a heartbreaking moment because like I said, I see the... Mm situation with Jay Pusha and the mama in that dynamic uh and that made me kind of sad for for him but this is when Meech gets activated with his ideas to save the day so so would you say this is uh reminiscent all right or old to boys in the hood Doughboy and Ricky right Mm -hmm. so Carter's like Ricky Mm -hmm. and Jay Jay Push Push is like Doughboy yeah, my one in the streets, but my one who's got promise and he's going to go all the way. My baby's going to uh, make it to the yeah. big league. Definitely felt that way. Okay, good stuff, good stuff. All but right. I did love Tia in that moment. I, I loved her comforting mama. I thought that was special. And we get to yeah. see the respectful Meech again, which, you know, like I said, him and the, the Homeowners Association lady is an anomaly. Because <laughs> we know Meech respects his elders in most situations. <laughs> He does. It's just that when you know an elder is really going out of their way to get on your nerves and to do just just be nosy in your business, it's like you have no choice but to be like, you know what, (laughs) ma'am, let me show you something. But yes, they cut off his finger. He calls again like, yeah, so you you got my package? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what does Jay Push do? Instead of paying, he's like, put a bounty on their heads. Nah, Meech, forget all of that. You know what I'm saying? 100000 
to get these guys out and 200,000 to get my brother back. Man, look. I I, I, I can't. Yeah, yeah, I mean, we never known him. We, this is the first time we get to know him, right? So if you're, again, I asked the question to everybody, if that was your brother, right, and your mom is on your case, what would you do? You know, what would, what would you read? What would you really do? All right. So, Meets calls T. Yo, listen, man. Uh, yeah, what's going on? How you doing? <laughs> How you doing, T? How's it going? Listen, man. You know, uh, we having a concert in St. Louis, and we need a thousand, a thousand comp tickets. You know, how they talking cold. You know what I mean? We need oh, a thousand comp tickets. First it was chickens, <laughs> then it was chickens. I said, listen, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> 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 the cluck cluck and goose goose didn't you know th did they hatch not nah, they didn't hatch i know you i know a lot oh, of people was, I was like four was bad the eggs was bad okay <laughs> <laughs> i got it though i mean i watched it a couple of times like okay i know what they're talking about i get it because then you see what happens after that but yes we need a thousand comp tickets to come to st louis and she's like, damn, man, you're always putting your nose in people's business. You know what I mean? Like we said, we was going to stay out of the way, do our own concert and stay away from, you know, Atlanta concerts. Right. You know, da, 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 da. like keep it on the low. Right. You understood that well, Right. So he was just like, come on, man. If it was if it was anybody else, I would do it for you. Da, da, da. If you wanted me to do it, I would do it. And then he's like, yo, by the way, your niece is doing well. <laughs> Mm -hmm. That pissed off me. Like, he's like, he's like, why you gotta do that, man? You know what I'm <laughs> I, I sent the gift to mama, man. You ain't get it, man. Just, just, just send the birds, man. Like, you know, they, they got that weird relationship. But I mean, he did say, yo, it's all about you, right? It's all about you, Meech. You know, I, was like, yeah. I don't think it's, a, I don't think, I don't know. I don't, I don't, it's not, I don't think it's all about Meech. I don't think of him like that. I think he's really trying to help. He is trying to, he is Captain Saver, bro. You know what I mean? But he's also trying to plant his flag in St. Louis. So what better way to plant your flag in St. Louis but by to help him out? Because they want the, the product or they want the money. That's what they said. So if he sends the product down, you're going to establish stuff anyway. You know, so. Like you um, said, he got the purest. And I, I too, I think that Meech is a man of the people. And yeah. I honestly think he felt this situation not only because he was there when Carter was taken but also he's thinking about his own relationship with his brother and what did he do when Terry got popped right like it's that same sort of I want to be here for you and I know you're messing stuff up Jay so I need to be here to help you out you know what I mean I, I honestly I, I don't think it ever is really about me I think it's about the family or who his family is you know what I mean in that moment and growing it so I agree I agree with you I agree with you on that. Okay, okay. Let's keep it pushing. Keep it pushing. I see y'all family. I see y'all family. If you're just getting here for the first time, all right. So my man comes in, all right, comes to see the baby. You know, <laughs> Lawanda's mom, man. She <laughs> she said it wasn't even a town and country. I said, well, dang, Terry, <sighs> you couldn't get him a town and country. You couldn't get him a house. Get him a town. Why? And why are we not grateful? Period. We know that he is doing not doing right by being with this other woman, but the man is coming in bearing gifts and trying to do the best that he can. She wants him to stop playing house with Marquisha. I get it. She wants him to be here to take care of the baby. She doesn't want presents. She wants his present, his presence. I get it. Like here, like be here for us and the baby. Is it his best, Jay? Let's be honest. Listen. Just like Lucille, she has wants to decide what she wants to do with her life. We're talking about grown people here. He doesn't want to be with Wanda, but he wants to be the best father possible. What is wrong with that? When did he say What's he didn't want that? to be with Jay? Jay, Jay, Jay. It's obvious, though. Yo, it's obvious, dog. If you're still screwing a woman, Jay, if, if, you, if you're he still... Her. If pe He's not screwing Wanda right now. Sir... Just because she had a baby for six weeks. Where you but see she that? She ain't giving him none. Before. Come on, Jay. She gave him something. Gave him something. When did she give him something? I, listen, I didn't see let's that. Not, let's not be disingenuous. I didn't about see that. No, I'm being honest. I'm being genuine as possible. I did not see Terry and Lawanda get busy. When did that happen? They was, was that just another together? assumption. I just want my family back. Big Keish just came back in the picture. Jay, be serious. We I'm dead serious, dog. I watched all I watched all seasons. And I'm telling you this right now. Yeah, he wanted his family back, but we don't see where he is 
Ding her down. Okay? It's pregnant. It's happening. It's happening. Assumption. Okay. It might not Assumption. be happening in six weeks because she Assumption just had Assumption with no it's no facts Listen, though. She's not acting a fool like this for no reason. But there's no Look, facts. I was with her. I was out, you know, trying to make money for the family. Terry, you're a liar. You're lying, Terry. You're lying. You didn't sold LaWanda so, a dream about a family and being back together. Okay. That you're okay. over here with fat cat, big quiche, okay? okay? Putting her up in a nine bedroom house, how many, however many bedrooms it is, is mm -hmm. sorry. And I'd be pissed about a little van too. Again, and I'm not defending, I'm not defending Terry. I'm not defending Terry, but again, I'm talking about facts here. I don't see that Terry is still with LaWanda physically. I know she just had a baby. Yeah, he wants right. to have a family. He's saying he wants to have a family. I get you. He's selling her a dream. He's selling her wolf tickets. OK, he's lying about not being with Markeisha. She caught him out in the lie. The cook gave him up. Got it. OK, I'm not defending him. But what I'm saying is right now in this episode, mm -hmm. OK, he's trying to make up for doing the dumb stuff. He did some dumb shit. OK, he did. He got caught out there. OK, here's some gifts for the baby. Here's a card to help you out. Y'all still don't give nope, him nothing. Nope. Nothing for that. that. No, nothing. For, and, OK, until that's, that's big what you LaWanda, want until he gets big LaWanda in a similar situation to how he's keeping big quiche. It's no comparison. I don't want to. I, I wouldn't want to hear nothing from Terry. And then all the La LaWanda ain't even really asking for the physical. She's asking for his time. Like, take your child and be with him all night. Come and stay up with her. I'm sleepy. I'm a single mama over here in these streets. Like, OK, thank you. Thank you, Candy. OK, OK. I hear you. <laughs> Again, I just, I just, it's not enough. The man, Terry, the man, whether whether the man whether the man does anything for her or nothing, it's a no win situation for Terry. We see that he he did what he did. He, he cheated on her. He's with Markeisha and he's with two ladies at the same time. I can't defend that. And he's still not being a present father. Don't, don't miss he's that not part. being a present father. He's not because he's being with he's being with Markeisha. He's not. He's not going to give her. What, and she said that though, right? She said that. I'm not saying I never said he was being a good father. I said he's trying to be a good father. OK, I never said that. So, again, whether Terry is smashing LaWanda or not. Yeah, he's smashing season two. Got it. That's how they have a baby. That's why they have a baby now. Got it. <laughs> OK, but I'm not defending them. I'm just saying whether he tries or not, it's a no win situation for him because y'all always going to. Everybody always going to say, well, he's still with Markeisha. He's not raising the family. He's trying to raise another family with somebody else who he, who he has no ties with, doesn't even have a baby with. Okay? I get it. Right? Right. Spend the time, present tense. Yes. <laughs> he is spending time. He's at the house now. Like, in this episode. <laughs> That's not enough, though. We know it's not enough. And she stated that. We need you here. Present. Stay up all night like me, taking care of this baby. I got it. He ain't going to do that, though. Right? Of course she is, Candy. I agree with you. We know that. We're going to get to that. We're going to get to that part. And I wasn't happy about that either. Okay? I wasn't happy about that either. Okay? I'm not defending Terry. I'm just saying the man is trying, but he gets no wins either way. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Oh, man. What is this about? Talk to me, Ashley. What were Listen. your thoughts about this? Nicole had to educate the people. And and I mean, little Nicole is has more wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, it feels like, than all of these people in the show. <laughs> um, because we, we saw that she's carrying the switchblade, or not the switchblade, but the box cutter, right? Because yeah. she felt helpless when that little boy got taken out by Lamar, right? Um, and she said, I felt helpless. There was nothing I could do in that moment. But I will say, Lil Breeze, Lil Breeze really like him some, Nicole, because what young man gonna stand up like that? He said, oh, oh, that's mine. I said, little sweet baby, look at him. Look at him. Trying to look out for her. And so we see that she gets caught up by the security officer because they have metal detectors. I'm curious about how she forgot she had it, where she had it, though, because she really seemed surprised when she looked in her bag and saw the box cutter. Um, but then, of course, when the parents come, why did you have this? Why did you have this? She's like, have y'all ever seen someone be unalived in front of you? Like, for some reason, both Lucille and Charles seem completely disconnected from Nicole and her experiences. So Nicole got every reason to be upset and mad. Yeah. Like, 
it's like they're not yeah, paying yeah. attention. <laughs> well, they all dealing with their own stuff. I mean, I did think it was was uh, pretty, you know, noble of Breeze to be like, nah, that's mine, that's mine, that's mine. But when you see a big C flinnery on the blade, like <laughs> you can't really like get around that. Be like, oh, that's yours. Uh, who's that? <laughs> right. So, I mean, it is what it is, man. Like she she got in trouble. She's not, you know, I don't know if she's grounded or not. I don't, I don't know. We didn't get that Shouldn't far, be. but yeah. And like the she's people in the comments are saying, she's dealing yeah. with trauma. Lauren's report exactly. said that. It is mm -hmm. like to see somebody unalived and it's like they never addressed it. Don't put her, don't get her therapy. Don't get accounts. Like don't do anything. Well, you Just, know, they said, that's what Charles said. He's like, I thought we got past this. You never get past somebody being unalive right in front of you and someone reaching out to you, like help me and you can't help them. And you're a freaking uh, child. Like, you never get past that unless you get therapy. You know what I mean? So, yeah. So, the veteran is trying to take the stuff, trying to take the tickets to the concert in St. Louis, and his car goes out, and he is unalive instantly, and all the product is all over the place. Yeah, there's some stuff up in here. Like, dang, crazy, crazy. But let's get past that. Uh, so, here we are, Markeisha. In the house, talking to her friend, girl, let me get a pen. She goes in the drawers and she sees the sales invoice. Terry bought LaWanda a 1990 Dodge Caravan, right? So, of course, he comes in and she wants to know and tests him out to see if he brought anything for LaWanda, right? And then what happened? What happened? You remember what happened? Is this the moment where she was like, oh, we want, we need to make sure she has everything that she needs, Terry. Did you bring mm -hmm. a gift? Did you do whatever? Just a, just a master manipulator. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you have clips from what she actually does after this, but of course, Terry is so appreciative. Like, I have such a good woman on my hands. She just loves me and wants to make sure that my baby mama is straight. Uh, but then Big Keish takes a trip. Yeah, yeah, I got that. I got that. We'll get to that. <laughs> but I just found it funny how she knew what was going on, playing along with him in the whole nine. And she just wanted to see if he's going to tell the truth. He's lying to both of them. He's lying to Marquisha and lying to uh, LaWanda as well. So, yep. Terry's trifling. Everybody's trifling. But the difference is Big Keish, I mean, she don't, I mean. Mm-hmm. She, she's nothing. I mean, I mean, you know. I got you. <laughs> I got you. So uh, we see that your girl brings in the file and before she got, you know, suspended or whatever, she's telling your boy about Henry and the relationship. He, I don't know why he acting like he don't know all of that. He knows who Blaze is and he knows who Henry is. He's been working with him. I don't understand why this conversation even happened when he already told her Oh, Henry is a woman, and she already knows that he was moonlighting as she snitched on him to the captain. So I, I didn't even get that. I was just like, oh, I gotta didn't get together. Either. And the only other thing she divulges at that point is that she would the the chief made a weird face when she mentioned Henry's name and took her badge, and so now she's suspended as well. Yeah, and then we figure out they both figure out that yeah, Blaze probably in the pocket of the chief, and he you know all of this and that. Like, oh, yeah, okay, okay. So your boy is like, yo, we about to take take Henry out. You know what I'm saying? He learned what he needed to learn in ATL, that he can flip one into two, and then he's going to undercut Henry and all of them and flood the streets with everything and really just take her out where she's going to be overpriced and nobody's going to want to buy from her. What do you mm -hmm. think about this whole collaboration and, and this I whole mastermind was, that Terry came up with? Yeah, I thought it was amazing. I said, okay, Terry, this, this is your wheelhouse. This is the space... Terry needs to operate in, right? Because I think for a long time, he was trying to do what he thought a gangster would do, right? Rather mm. than using his intellect, which we know Terry was known for, especially in season one, he was a bright student, right? Um, had all kinds of options for the future. And so I like him using his brain more um, instead of like brute force. Also, um, what I thought was hilarious was how scared these men were of Mrs. Still Your Girl. The one was mm. like... Look, they acted like they were like, I don't want her to cut me with her sword. <laughs> She's <laughs> crazy. <laughs> yeah, they they were shook, right? 
Mm -hmm. But I thought it was a good move. And I was like, Terry, I mean, the right price is going to buy anybody. Okay. Uh, So I loved it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, listen, it was a great plan on Terry's part. I mean, I didn't see a conversation with Meech on this one. So Terry, Terry smart. Terry is smart in this instance, as far as like the deal. Okay. As far as like his business being talking about personal. Right. So here we go. We go to the spot where they did have Carter, but they got out of there. Right. Because, you know, they somebody shot up the place or whatever the case is. And Meech sees these empty Chinese food cartons. Meech is on the case. Yo, I got a plan. It may save Carter, but you can't tell Jay. So what do you think about this right here? I mean, did you immediately know that that's what Meech was going to do as far as finding out where these guys are with the Chinese food? Did that pop in your mind? No, but I think he, I think he, he, he's, he's a, a think on your feet type of person. So it didn't surprise me, but no, I didn't, I was like, yeah, no, I didn't know that's what he was going to connect two and two. Um, yeah. Once, once I smart. saw them. Yo, yeah. Oh yeah. Once I saw them do that, I did pretty much figure it out and say, okay, yeah, they're going to find out where they ordering food from. I mean, you know, they freaking kidnapping people when they need to eat. Right. So that was cool. Okay. Here we go. So this is the part, right? Markeisha comes to spread love. I just want to, you know, have a discussion with your daughter and they go into it. What do you think about this scene? Like, I mean, talk to me. What was your what was your reaction to the whole scene here? That raggedy huffa. She did she, you know, she wasn't about Lawanda and what Lawanda <laughs> needed. She was there to basically plant her flag and say, that's my man. Or uh. or not even that's my man, but how are we gonna share our man is what it mm. boiled down to um big quiche is diabolical uh mm. big quiche is uh and, and she got the reaction from lawanda that she wanted lawanda put on a tough front but uh-huh. we know that that's gonna breed some insecurity we we already know we already know he getting you the same gifts i mean she had to go in pull the mink out the fur uh <laughs> right. and was like you want a second one because this is gonna keep you warm on your lonely nights i got his blood but we we know <laughs> lawanda don't think that's really gonna keep him Honey, that's why she was at the root worker last season. She, we know she feels out of her depth, um, mm-hmm. and I think she just came in there to show her what it was like. <laughs> I'm Big Quiche. Um, <laughs> Damn, that's, that's our man. Okay, he's doing all the things for me. Um, right. Yeah, and I just came by to drop you off a few little trinkets. It was basically her way, I think, of trying to put Lawanda in a place she felt like she deserved to be because then she called her like a bootleg version of me. You're just a bootleg version of me or something yeah, like that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah that raggedy stuff, but she ain't no good. She ain't no good. She ain't no good. She's dangerous. Man. Yeah. That was, it was kind of wild. Right. But again, as you said, I'm planting my flag. Yeah. You see that? You see, I caught that. Right. <laughs> but she did say she did. LaWanda did make a good point. Ain't nothing tied to you. I got to see. That's our connection, meaning like he could get rid of you at any time. You know what I mean? So she did try to, you know, jab a little bit with that. Like, I got his babies. You know what I'm saying? You don't got nothing with Terry. But she was like, I don't care, whatever, whatever. But what about the mom, though? She was like, well, take this. And the mom was like, wait, hold on a second. Let's not be rude. (laughs) We know, we know Luanda mama been about that bread, period. That's all she's concerned about. Don't throw the fur and leave the gifts. Nope, nope, no, you listen. (laughs) Keep the me. Keep the me. Yeah. But you ain't got to take the gifts back. Leave leave them. Yeah, just out of line. Even LaWanda, after she left, was like, Ma, really? Right, right. right. (laughs) (laughs) She know how your mama do. She know how your mama do. Okay. Okay. I did kind of say it was him. At first, I was saying it was Duffy. I was like, nah, it's not Duffy. But I said, okay, it could be Sterling. But we find out Sterling does come down with the with the with the white with the white girls. He brings the product or whatever, whatever. But here we go with another task force. Mm-hmm. Like what the hell? They just all over the place. They must be in the hood or whatever, and they just storming through or whatever, whatever. But what did you think about another Meech play, man? I'm about to do a whole segment called Meech plays, right? Meech's plays. What did you think about this play when he was like, "All right, pull out the map, got Carter's it. hat, huh?" I said, I loved it. I loved everything about it. That is code switching at its finest. And it it served a purpose. Listen, they think we all look alike anyway. So how was he going to know he wasn't a baseball <laughs> player? Like, come on. 
It was clever, man. It was Thank clever. You. I was like, wow. I was like, yo, I who would have thought of that? Like, again, Meech keeps his cool. It's like, hold on, hold on. All right, get the bag, get the bag. You know what? I got a plan. He was coming up with a plan as they're running around the car. And he said, you know, nah, nah, we can't go in your car because you got Michigan plates already swapped out for Missouri plates. So they're not really going to suspect. If they see Michigan, then they're going to suspect something. Jump in my whip. You know what I mean? Let me get the baseball cap. Yeah, you yeah. know, officer. In the back. I'm, they recruited me and they expect me to know where to go. <laughs> Yeah, the bat, the the bat, the glove in the back. It was yeah. perfect everywhere the cop was gonna look. Like, oh yeah, yeah. And he was acting so unsuspicious. Like, I don't know where to go, officer. Please help. You know, you know. Go Cardinals. Go Cardinals. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you stay safe out there, buddy. <laughs> clever, clever. All right, here we go. <laughs> Okay, okay. I just want to see her reaction. You should have seen her reaction initially. Yeah, she's like, <laughs> let's talk about your favorite girl family, Markeisha. She gets pulled over by this guy. The guy, I think he was in uh, family. Let me know if I'm wrong or right. I think he was in Sisters or whatever. I think he was playing some dude, some Metro he dude. In. A lot of Tyler Perry stuff. He was in yeah. that uh, Browns spinoff they did yeah. too. Mm hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he rolls up and he's like, hey, what's going on? Oh, haven't seen you in a long time. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, you know, I pulled you over for not signaling him, but that's not why I pulled you over. I just wanted to see how you were, blah, 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 blah. But I still have to give you this. And we thought it was a ticket, but it wasn't. It was his number. Now, we also find out that he used to work with Boom. That's how he knows her. There was probably always some vibes there, right? So what do you think gonna happen? Cause you know, she did the whole trifling thing. We can get to that right now if you want to. Yeah, it's 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 a mess. Let's go. We might as well go there because oh, yeah. this is a dangerous woman, ladies and gentlemen. Just so you know. <laughs> you, you you dangerous. You know what I'm saying? Cause you're gonna bring this whole man who is automatically an op, right? Into uh -huh. the same vicinity as your man who's trying to make some power plays in the city. You're reckless, all too make him jealous and talk about your coot nanny's wet. Like I was too through with mm. big Ish on this episode. Do you hear me? But yeah, mm. I don't think it was ever a casual flirtation. Um, Markeisha has proven herself to be a woman of ill repute. So mm. she probably smashed him. Vince ain't, Vince ain't smiling like that for no reason. Mm -hmm. he ain't smiling like that for no reason, but yeah, dangerous. And, and you, at this point, yeah. you can see she's willing to stop at nothing to just elicit the reaction. She, look at her face in that middle one. Look at it. Mm -hmm. She loves it. She loves every single second of it. Yeah, it's a dangerous game. It's a game. Dangerous. Okay, so, I mean, listen. So, so look, look. I, I don't defend her at all, okay? I'm just saying. She is one of the most trifling women on this mother freaking show. Because honestly, <laughs> honestly, like... How you going to purposely call dude knowing that you outwit Terry? You know what I mean? You outwit Terry and then Terry goes to the bathroom. He rolls just to get moist. To get a just reaction. Because, just because you was mad because he didn't tell you the truth about buying the van for Lawanda. So you trying to see what's going on, man. That, it was about uh, power. Everything she does is about power and manipulation, right? Yeah. So not only did this kind of endear her to the Vince guy, right? It's kind of right. setting up a rivalry between Vince and Terry. But then yeah. it's also showing Terry, you know, I'm wanted out here in these streets. Mm -hmm. The men want me, okay? Um, it's very disgusting, very uh, insecure. It's a really insecure move. But yep. like I said, it's dangerous because he's automatically going to be Terry's op now. Like, it's just bad for yeah. business. Automatically, like, okay. Do you think that they actually got down? Because I'm thinking that she actually messed around with dude. While yeah, he was working for Boone and Boone was away and they got busy one time. You know what I mean? That's what and I said, now, Jay. Yeah. He ain't yeah. smiling like that for no reason. They have a history. They done did yeah. some stuff. Yeah, I'm telling you, man, they 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 did it before and now he's trying to come back with it. You know what I mean? So oh, I ain't mean to go there, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, feel it, feel it, Terry. You get me so moist. Oh my God. Like, and he I'm just fall for it. He's so oblivious, man, when it comes down to her, bro. And they like, didn't have I, a drop on. Of course she didn't. Of course. <laughs> of course she did. I agree with you. 
<laughs> I'm telling you, trifling, trifling, trifling. Okay, okay, okay. All right. We see Jen turn into <laughs> Miss Blondie. Now she going undercover. Now she trying to flirt. Look like, yo, Henry actually looked normal in this right here. Like, look like, and she wasn't crazy. Like, she was really laid back to me. That's why I was like, yo, maybe Blaze Photo. I don't know. What do you think about this scene right here? Like, I mean, it's, 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 it's Jen over her head, man. With yes, this. because, and this is not ageist. I'm not making an ageist comment when I say this. <laughs> but Jen, you're not that girl. Like, mm. you might be a specific designated market for some who have a fetish or something. But, like, take off that blonde wig, Jen. Like, what, what did you think you were really doing? I think this is going to backfire badly. Um, we know Henry will, Henry will smash whoever, it seems, seemingly. Wow. Um, so, I mean, Jen might mess around and get turned out. But we also know that Henry will take a chick out in a second. I, it's a dangerous right. game. And if I was Jen, I wouldn't play it. And it's also not translating. I don't know what she was going for. But to me, it didn't give... I don't know. It didn't give what I think she thought it gave. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was weird. Give did, was Jen it was, serving the girls? I it, it was it was weird because I'm like, what were you trying to accomplish here? You're trying to get close to do what? And yeah, Jen, like Henry is hitting and smashing anything that she can with that little plastic thing. Like she don't care. She's a freak. That big plastic obviously. thing. Jay. You know what big. I mean? And Okay, I wasn't looking that close. But yes, I get it. Like, I'm just saying, like, she'll do anything with anybody, it seems. You know what I mean? And uh, eh, again, whatever. All right. We got the Chinese food spot. This was a, another Meech's play. Another dope Meech play. Here we are. We got the dude. Where's Carter at? Give Carter back. Da -da -da -da. I ain't telling you nothing. Knocks him on the punches him in the face. The whole nine. Yo, you're lucky I've seen a lot of deaths because, you know, I'm telling you right now, Sterling, he got a zero policy. Da -da -da. So Sterling got the knife. He ready to do what he need to do. You know what I mean? So he takes his hand, puts it in the car, and your girl slugger comes with the bat. What did you think about this play right here? Pretty clever to me. I, it, it was. And I, I liked everything about it. Again, Meech ain't losing with these power plays. Uh, in the moment, of course, you know, we'll let you live because bodies are bad for business. That's the theme, like you said. Um, but also then, but, you know, an eye for an eye. So we got to yeah. take that finger. And then she gets to play grit ball with you, with the baseball bat. And right. she went in on them. I loved it. I, I think this was Kia's best performance in the episode. I loved it. I loved everything <laughs> about it. Before I'm out. With that bat. Yeah. She was like, you screaming like a little bitch. <laughs> and then she was like, go ahead, Slugger. Go ahead, Slugger. But shout out to my guy, my guy, Demarcus Vaughn, with the $2 Super Chat. Appreciate you, bro. Uh, definitely thank you for your support, my brother. And he says, who is more hated, Markeisha or Queen Louie? Okay. Louis. Those who know Louie from Snowfall, some, Louis, some, some people may not. You say Louie? Okay. Louis. Listen, there is no comparison. I don't know if there will ever be a greater female villain in this genre than Louis because Louis played with my emotions. I loved Louis initially. So I think to go from loving a character to utterly wishing their demise, that's deep. That's deep. I Louis, ugh, diabolical. Now that's Louis. a diabolical. Louis affected everybody. Louis Ooh. just was not trying to hear nothing, always trying to be on top. I mean, again, I I say Louie too. I agree with you. I agree with you. I agree with you. But Just gave me Marquisha right now, she's the worst. Marquisha's the worst right now. She's the worst. I mean, Henry's number one, though. Henry's number one, the worst. And then you got Marquisha right there. You know what I mean? What did you say? Oh, my God. See, Monique 69 ways. What? She said she got to play. Uh, is, is it as big as that one, Monique? Because that one was big. I, I was like, I wasn't. bring okay. the toy. Okay. Sorry. I got you. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> Get it out. Get it out. <laughs> Get it out. Okay. I mean, ooh, that was that. All right. So moving on. Moving on. <laughs> moving on. <laughs> so here comes, hey, big boy. You, you, fan, you, you come here often. He's like, yo, what are you doing? Why you ain't telling me you was going to see Henry? Da, 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 da. You doing stuff behind my back? Okay. Okay. I'll do stuff with you. 
waste of film. Anyway, we get Carter back. <laughs> oh man, I'm never going to let you go. I'm never going. It's never going to happen again. Blah 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 blah. You know, oh, Meet you the hero, and Mama's hugging him, and you know everybody's loving on Meech and don't listen to that. But Meech again, noble dude. We all did this, Mama. We all did this. It wasn't just me. It was all of us. She's like, you were my hero. Again, noble. Like, we did this together. You know what I mean? I couldn't have done this without them. I like that about, you know, Meech. I like that. You know what I mean? He's not taking over. Meech is very observant. If he's not anything, he's observant. And he saw that family dynamic, too. So I think he wanted to make sure that Jay got some accolades in that. And what I loved even more was like, okay, now you're going to give your brother a whole lot of money and set him up somewhere else so that he's far away from this and he can actually live his dream I, and i right. and i really love that because he dope. said we can't have another rip situation mm-hmm. that's right and and again as we move on and we see that you, he's like yo i need you to set me up because i plan on staying out here and she's like oh you gonna stay here huh yeah he's like yeah you know i'm gonna go back and forth so you already know looking at her eyes she's like okay because you know she's been feeling him from day one when he was playing baseball and trying to hit that ball she was like come on me she's being all encouraging and all of this and that you know she was feeling me from day one and we know he got a type we know he got a type right mm-hmm. so and she did it. she's so cute they're cute together they are adorable i actually hope yeah. this has a little longevity but we know Meech is for the streets <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We'll see what happens, right? So he gets a call from Duffy and the, go ahead, okay. What, what what did Duffy say now? What, what you said you said a little something earlier. What were we talking about? Ducks and hatches. Oh, what are you talking about? Yeah, this is when the, the chickens went bad and the, the eggs went bad, and I was like, okay. But I think what it boiled down to was Glock is the man on top right now, and they're gonna have to figure out a plan to get things back in motion in the ATL. Right. So also, with that, um, what he was telling me through code is that the reason why he had to go dark is because the freaking Red Dogs and everything was trying to get cases on Meech. So what he's saying is, you know, everything they was trying to do, it went sour. So nobody oh. testified. It's OK to come back to the A now. And that's why he went back, because they're no longer coming after him. So whatever eggs was being planted or whatever, nah, it was rotten eggs. Didn't work. So now all of that is gone. You can come back through. So that's that's what I picked up on that message as well. Um, so yeah, yeah, he's going back to the A. And it is what it is. But before we go back to the A, though, we got to get a little something shot. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Meech. Getting the draws before he go. You know what I mean? Got to get his. You know what I mean? But we find out a lot about Kia, that, you know, she's book smart and she's smart and that, you know, her mother was in the, what, Hall of Fame or something like that for for Mm -hmm. baseball and she was supposed to go to college but she got injured so she couldn't go and all this and that and again Meech is just like, man, I don't like, you know, people wasting their talent, whatever the case is but she's like, I ain't regretting it because my father was a hustler and I, you know, I'm glad that my mama let me play with the boys because I learned a lot from all of that so she knows how to move within the streets so that's a good thing. She could be a great asset, yo. I think she could be a great asset, especially in the loop, especially in Okay. I think she'll be like one of them kind of homie lover friend type of moments. And this is the moment I knew what that conversation was about Mm because he said, you know, they lifted the indictment so he could go home. That that's how I found out because honestly, I still Mm -hmm. didn't know what the rotten eggs was. Thank you for the interpretation. (laughs) Like we, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, But yeah, yeah, you know that moment I was like, well, maybe he'll put is he gonna put the girl through school? But definitely gave homie lover friend vibes. You know, we'll we'll Mm -hmm. see be she'll be there anytime he goes back to st louis i'm sure yeah 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 yeah. absolutely absolutely so yeah yeah i mean this part right here yeah it's on it's on yo like we we flipped everybody that was down with henry now henry gonna find out blaze gonna find out too and just like terry said yo man like i wouldn't want you to lose everything because of your daughter but at this point, he's about to lose everything when it comes down to the street and the products and stuff like that because you wasn't checking your daughter. So where do you think this is going to go? Because I don't think Blaze or Henry's going to go down without a fight. Well, I think, uh, I think Blaze will appeal to Terry's better nature at some point. I, I don't think it's going to be um, the the bang up with Blaze. I think Blaze will probably might come in at the ninth hour. 
and put mm-hmm. Henry down, um, it might build up to that point because Henry's mm-hmm. going to be mad and she's going to be operating like a psychopath here soon, um, it, worse than she's ever been before. And so I think this is going to make her daddy do something. I think it's going to mm-hmm. make him take action. So, you know, mm-hmm. it, it's setting the stage for what needs to happen for Terry to literally have the control he needs in the D. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree with you on that. Uh, the ninth hour, because again, we saw what happened when Henry, um, uh, when Brian came up in there with the shot he about to take out Henry, he was right there. You know what I'm saying? So he'll let it go, but so far, but if you get too close to Henry, his daughter, he gonna come through and just shut it down. So we'll see, man. I, I don't know. I think if if Terry BMF runs the streets, they undercutting everybody seven grams lower than everybody else. You can't beat that. You can't beat it. We're doubling, we're doubling our product so we can sell you more product without having to buy more product. So we're getting way more profit coming in as opposed to just having this one stack and then selling it. No, I can make one and a two. I can make two and a four. You know what I mean? So we have way more supply so we can sell more and undercut everybody. Come on, dog. Come on. Okay, cool. Here we are. Compliments of the gentleman over there. We are back. <laughs> <laughs> Meet just back in the Platinum Palace. We're happy to see him. The fam is happy. What do you think about this moment? Were you happy that, you know, the ATL fam still embraced him, still was waiting for him? Absolutely. We know it's love. We know it's love. Wherever Meech goes, where he's connected, it's absolutely love. Now, what I thought they was going to do, I thought mm-hmm. we were either going to see Greeny or Angel, though. I can't lie. I <laughs> thought they were going to do some pop-up in the last hour that was going to just be the cliffhanger. Yeah. Um, until we get to the next episode, but we didn't see that. But again, we saw Nisi, we saw the crew. It was all love. You know what I thought? What? I, the first thing I thought was, where's Remy? Because every time they in the club, Remy's in the club. <laughs> you know <what> I'm <laughs> Do we got to knock him out again? Like, where's he at? But again, we got to find out. And I like how they, they left this off, right? Because they said, well, you know, Glock is the king of the A. And he's like, yeah, okay. We'll see about that. You know what I mean? We'll, we'll see about that. So I'm looking forward to, you know, what's going to happen now because we need to find out what happened with Claude, who was Remy's boy, and he was working with Meech. We need to find out what happened with Greeny, right? We know what happened to Greeny. That Greeny got locked up, right? From my understanding, he got locked up. But uh, we need to find out what's going on with everything that we left off with in, in the A. So I'm looking forward to the next episode, which um, I believe you are covering episode eight. Is that correct? It'll be in my house. Absolutely. In your house. Okay. My wonderful. House. Wonderful. All right. All right. Not angel yeah. for president, Sharon. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> she is tripping. <laughs> you thought Angel was going to pop out? I see you. I see you. Yeah, yeah. You say, can you say Blaze versus Henry? All right. We'll mm-hmm. see. We'll see. We'll, we'll see about that one. Okay. Uh, he's going to take her out or vice versa. We'll see, mm-hmm. man. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I would say TP says Glock belongs in that uh, Steven Siegel movie, uh, Proper Drop. Okay, TP. Thank you for that. Um, okay. All right. Good stuff, family. So, Sweet P, Ashley, what is going on with the channel this weekend, next week, everything? We know you do a million videos a day. A ton of stuff, guys. <laughs> a ton of stuff, guys. So, don't forget to stop by tomorrow. Um, either my channel or Jay's channel, we'll be talking about, um, I believe, episode six of DR from Detroit. That's coming down. D- Jay, I think we only have eight episodes. So after tomorrow, it's only two more episodes of DR from Detroit this season. Listen, I don't make a ton of suggestions all the time, but if y'all are not watching Fallout on Prime Video, I need you guys to go ahead and watch it, okay? All eight episodes dropped, and I am going to be reviewing it because I watched episode one in I'm in love and I'm not even Fallout, the video game, an aficionado. But that review's coming. My Palm Royale video is coming. Um, Chow, we just got a lot in the works. All of my regularly scheduled content will come. And then tomorrow I'll be doing a live with Tyra from um, Struggle Reviews. If y'all watch that Jared Carmichael show, please be sure to drop in because I have so many thoughts. And I'll be sharing that. And then don't forget, Monday night here, um, we will have the final predictions for episode eight of BMF. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Good stuff. Good stuff. Good stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Candy Love. I see you. I see you. Uh, Fam, so make sure you check us out tomorrow. 
Diara from Detroit, you know, my channel, her channel, we'll be doing that. Uh, I still got to watch it. <laughs> so I'm going to be watching that. And uh, yeah, we got to talk about that tomorrow. Um, definitely look out for some exclusive picks from the next for the next episode of episode eight of BMF on Monday as we usually go live with that. All right. Um, definitely check out um, our season finale recap of Tyler Perry's Ruthless. So if you like Ruthless, definitely check that out. It was a great live. Check that out. Uh, we will be working on doing a wrap up and we're going to uh, attempt to get some of the actors and actresses from the Tyler Perry Ruthless show. So we are already in the works of trying to work that out to get the folks to come through so we can just talk about and get their perspective on leaving, finally leaving the campus. So if you into that, definitely come through for that as well. And then we're going to be getting geared up, getting ready for May because May the shy is coming back, family. So get ready for that. Uh, you probably see it in my community tab, P Valley. We probably not going to see that till next year. Cause they're going to be filming from April all the way to November. So we're probably going to not see P Valley until next year. Uh, what else is coming? We got Pow- power, but ghost coming right in June. So look out for that as well. So we're going to be doing stuff here and there and, uh, definitely make sure you look out for, you can't handle the true family because yeah, it seems like the truth seems like that's a hit type of show and uh yeah we gotta have ashley on man we gotta have ashley on and see what's going on with her see if she can handle the truth okay <laughs> and yeah i'm looking you know what i'm actually looking forward to seeing um you know that show that i don't like that cartoon show that's coming out i'm actually i don't know if we're going to do a reaction or not i'm not watching the first episode i'm not even supporting the thing but i'm looking forward to seeing what the reactions are um we'll see we'll see we'll see so but anyway family it's been fun it's been great ashley any last words for the people as always we appreciate y'all thank you for stopping in thank you for showing support and keeping the chat super lit as always yeah we really really value you and appreciate you also please be sure to like comment subscribe hit the bell honey the notification bell so you know whenever we drop something new but yeah that's all have an amazing rest of your weekend y'all enjoy Absolutely. We appreciate you guys for coming. Thank you for your love and support for myself and Sweet Pea. Enjoy your weekend. We'll see you tomorrow, family. We'll see you tomorrow. Till next time. Salute. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, love this video, appreciate this video, please hit the like button. And if you're here for the first time, please hit that subscribe button. We appreciate you for watching. We'll see you next time on VKJ TV and Friends.